Terrorists in the early hours of Sunday burned a Catholic priest, Isaac Archie, alive in Paikoro local government area in Niger State. It was gathered that when the attackers could not gain access to the well-forfeited building where the priest was living, they set it ablaze. Meanwhile, the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN Niger State, has condemned the killing of the priests. In a statement, the CAN chairman of the state, Bulu Johanna, called on the Nigerian government and security agencies to arrest the spate of killings across the country. He called for an investigation into the attack on the priest, adding that culprits must be brought to book. Reverend Father Isaac Achi was the parish priest as of the time of the Christmas Day bombing at St. Teresa's Catholic Church in Madala, Niger State, on December 25, 2011. Well, joining us to discuss this very um, unfortunate uh, situation is Reverend Joseph Hayab. He is the Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State. Thank you so much, Reverend Hayab. I wish we were talking on a, a different circumstance, but unfortunately, uh, we have to talk about this. It is sad that we are not yet through with this tragic uh, experience. As you know that yesterday, we had this, it was a double tragedy, one in uh, Niger State and another one in Katsina State. Mm. Because in Katsina State, a large number of worshippers were taken away to the worship in one of our church. And then the Reverend Father was also killed. So for everybody, it is really a sad story. It is a terrible situation where we thought we are almost going out, but we seem to be back and even worse. I, I want to start by noting that. Um, um, the north um, and and the northeast and of course the the north central now it's almost every part of the country has um, been getting one form of insecurity or security issue or the other. I mean, even in most states, is having its fair share. We're seeing more and more of these killings. But then it's interesting to know that Mr. President has flown to. Um, I think uh, Mauritania, if I'm not mistaken, to receive a peace award. Uh, but yet, one would question if we do really uh, have some peace in Nigeria, especially with all of the killings and, of course, the recent kidnappings in Edo State. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's really sad and painful to see that people who do not know what people in Nigeria are going through, probably they are looking for money or probably they want to just have an entry point to Nigeria organizations whose aim is not to promote understanding but just to issue and dash award. And so sometimes these award ceremonies and this award presentation makes a mockery of what is going on in the country. Uh, apart from that, I know that even in the last 10 days, the president himself or through his uh, spokespersons have come out to tell the world that uh, they have actually uh, tackled the insecurity. And we just ask ourselves question. Are they living in another planet? Are they really living in Nigeria? Do they know exactly what Nigerians are going through? And experience like this keeps reminding us that, look, we've actually just been governing with propaganda, governing with falsehood, governing with issuing statements that it's not the reality that people are going through. Uh, how could a level priest face such kind of debt in his house? And the other priest narrowly escaped, but he's still in the hospital. How could worshippers leave their home and go to worship and they do not come back there in the house of bandits? How could people just go to train station or train to, uh, to pick a train and then they ended up in the hands of bandit? And the president of this country will still say that he has tackled insecurity and not only by that, and organizations are coming to offer awards or the peace awards. We don't know what you call peace in this context. But, but can we really um, leave this at the feet of Mr. President? Because at some point we cried that there should be a change of service chiefs. And, and Mr. President, after a long time, caved in and gave us new service chiefs. Um, uh, the presidency has issued statements upon statements saying we're dealing with this issue. Uh, the army is doing this and that. We've, we've heard, you know, the presidency talked tough, tough, tough about this situation. So I want to understand, for those of you who are in the midst of what's happening, because for some people it seems more like a mirage because they do not understand what you're facing where you are. What do you think the major challenge is in dealing with this insecurity? Is it that it's being politicized? Is it that, because half the time the president always expresses shock at these things. Is it also the fact that maybe our troops have not been given what they need to do the job? Or what exactly is the constraint? It is not enough for our government or the presidency to think that issuing press statement or just coming to make a statement on national media 
will tackle insecurity, will stop criminals from doing their work. The fact of all is that we must take the war to them. We must show them that we have a government. We must show them that this government has so on ought to protect lives and properties of citizens. But when we just deal with issues of statements, statements that sometimes trigger another pain, then we've not done enough. I think generally what has been happening in Nigeria is that those who are working with the president think that the moment they issued statements, then the matter is over. The moment statements are issued, then they have treated the wound. Statements are not medication. Statements cannot treat any wound. I've had several times either Del Machio or Femi issuing statements and even saying things that is contrary to the exact picture of what happened. We don't know who are the source of their information and why they chose to make such kind of statement. So the criminals just believe that these are toothless bulldogs who will back and they are not going to bite. The fact about it is that if government have taken the war to these criminals, have taken the war to their camp, have taken the war more than the propaganda, because the rate at press statements, the rate at which we hear stories, is far, far, far outweigh the reality of their dealing with them. I'm not saying that there are no efforts from the military or no efforts from the security agencies, but we're simply saying that efforts are not enough, or these efforts are not back with the reality of the situation, are not back with proper security details and strategies that will eliminate criminals. You've already posted all over the media that you're going after criminals. They feed in, then you go and turn around with your car and told, told the world that the criminals, are, the, the camps are empty. The camp is only empty. Where are the criminals? They have hidden. Sometimes you say that you just lodge them, you kill them, you kill 100 of them, and then you cannot even show us even five cops of these criminals. And so, you know, this whole thing as if they're speaking to children or speaking to people who do not understand. But what we're simply saying is that we have a country, and in this country, there's a constitution. We have a country, and in this country, there's a government. And the responsibility of securing the citizens of this country is showed up on government. And that's why we call on the president. That's why we speak to him, because he is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If he issues order, order must be obeyed. Whoever do not obey his order should be fired. If he issue order and things are not working, even if the, chief of, uh, the, the, the chiefs have just lasted two weeks, if there is no result and we are sure that they are not placed, they are not doing right, it's just fine. If anybody knows that you will not last one month if there is no tangible and concrete and evidential result, you will go. Then people will sit up. But we are, we talk, talk, talk. Probably when they are tired of listening to us, they will just one announce the removal of one or two of them. But nothing has changed. No concrete action to show that there is an effort to eliminate these criminals who are tormenting Nigerians in Zamfara State, in Kaduna State, in Niger State. As you rightly said, in the northeast, it is not yet well, in the northwest now, and in north uh, central, and in even southeast, and every part of Nigeria. And we are approaching election. How do you expect people to really come out and cast their vote if we really want a democratic process where we will choose leaders that we will know that we actually chose them? How can people come out and vote when they can, they're not secured? Curious. Um, it, it's very easy, and I'm not in any way trying to say uh, absolve the presidency or Mr. President of his duties. But then states have governors, and these governors owe the people in their states a responsibility. And we were just talking, we, uh, you know, at the beginning. There's also Katsina, there's Kogi State. There are different states that have been having terrorist activities happening over and over. And one would ask, what is the job of a state governor? Because he also is a chief executive in that area. What are the states doing or to, to secure their people against these terrorist acts? Even though, the, you know, we, we have that excuse, the very quick and easy excuse that, oh, the governors don't control the military apparatuses because they all are at the center. Yeah, you see, this, I have always explained this, that the argument by state governors that they have no role to play, it's really uncalled for. But one of the reasons why we sometimes just don't want to go back again and be talking about state governors is they will simply hide on a section of the constitution that says they don't have the power to the police and all that. But I do know the kind of influence they make in who comes as a commissioner of police, the kind of influence and pressure they put on the DG SSS or who comes to their state as DG SSS. But do they listen to those people? Do they actually do what those people are supposed to do? You see, security is everybody's business. The fact of all is that the governors are the 
state level and the local government chairman at the grassroots level are the ones that are supposed to have the building structure for the Mr. President. Unfortunately, since seven years ago, what we say is that structures are supposed to help unite, structures are supposed to help deal with criminality, structures are supposed to help addressing issues like this have actually been bastardized or deliberately been distorted in such a way that they cannot have a role to play. So I tell us have a role to play. Stakeholders as religious leaders have a role to play. Look, virtually everybody. But you see, people can only cooperate. People can only say what they know if the system accommodates such kind of view. If the system tolerates them to say what they're supposed to say. If the systems protect them when they say what they know. But once the system even go after them because they say what they know, then everybody will be careful. If it has been done to James, then Stephen and uh, Peter will no longer say a word. If it has been done to Abubakar, then probably Abdullah and Shehbu will keep quiet. I think that is where it is. Let me bring Kaduna. I always want to cite Kaduna. When our governor came, he bastardized the traditional ruler system, a system that would help him shape who comes to the community and who is the new visitor, where is he coming from, what is he doing. Today, the traditional rulers just want to say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, to please government. But in reality, they cannot even do their work. So when things like this are no longer functioning, they, like, you need to know that today in Nigeria, the system of government that's supposed to help Nigeria unite the people is the local government. But we don't really have local government. We just have some institutions named in our constitution. But what they just simply do is collect allocation, share allocation, go and see the governor to know what he wants the allocation to be done, and it ends there. It is no longer people, because the constitution of Nigeria empowers a local government chairman. But how many local government chairman in Nigeria even have power? They don't look, they just want to dance alone. So the work he's supposed to do at the local government to win the heart of people, to help in depicting where there is evil, in speaking out, in helping to ensure that evil do not grow in their community, is not done. So as evil keeps growing in the local community, overwhelm the local government, and eventually overwhelm the state, and now overwhelm the, the nation. That's why we call on the Mr. President, because he is the Commander-in-Chief, that if these things are not going right, then step up and show that you are the Commander-in-Chief. Um, we, we, uh, again, I, want, I just want to put it out there. We, the people, the people who have been on the receiving end of this terrorism, insecurity, those who have been displaced as a result of it also, um, it's not enough to just wait for these people that we put in office, these leaders, um, who have not, like you have said, been able to do their jobs. What are we doing also to hold these people responsible? Because um, I'm looking at these pictures and these videos, and they're very heart-wrenching. And God forbid, another might happen, and it, there's, there might not be an end in sight. And like you said, we're getting ready for an election. Um, what story are we telling these people uh, for them to want to come out and vote in the first instance if they're not even safe in their homes, not safe in their places of worship? And what is the, the, like of, you know, the likes of Christian Association or, or the PFN or um, the joint forum of um, you know, um, religious people doing to not just safeguard their places of worship but also hold their leaders responsible because it's not enough for us to complain but what actions are we taking to make sure that our leaders are responsible to us? It is unfortunate that our leaders have deliberately divided us. They've divided us using religious line. They've divided us within our ethnic identity. They've divided us using our regional uh, identity and everything that we can think of. That's why instead of us uniting to fight crime, instead of us uniting to challenge them and hold them accountable, what you hear and what you see every day in Nigeria is people fighting each other according to tribe, fighting each other according to religion, fighting each other according to the region the people come from. So there is a deliberate way that our leaders have divided us. They have planted seeds of lack of trust among us. So even when you want to come up to fight them and hold them accountable, what you get is an attack from another party thinking, oh, you're attacking the governor because he's my tribe. Oh, you're attacking the governor because he's my religion. Oh, you're attacking the governor because he does not come from your senatorial zone. Oh, you're attacking the president because he's not of your identity. So this is the challenge we face in Nigeria. And sincerely speaking, we must, as Nigerians, understanding the pains that is going on, but take, develop courage 
and come out to vote so that at least we can have leaders that will know we vote for them or we voted for them. It's not going to be easy. But I have shared this in several forums where I have met with people. I said, look, we will secure our polling unit on election day. If I have your understanding, Pastor, organize yourself in your village. If you have two polling units, 100 people are doing accreditation, 100 people are watching around. And when the 100 who have finished accreditation finishing, they will come back to do accreditation. They will go to watch. The other group will come to do accreditation. That's the way we'll exchange until election is over. Because when we give in due to what we are seeing now, then our sorrow and pains is not yet over. We will have another four years of bitterness, four years of wailing and weeping the way you've shown us on the picture with those women. So we must do something. We are talking. Are people going to do it? I'm not going to say yes or no, but one thing I know is that my Bible teaches me is that when you tell a man that uh, a sinner that he if he do this he's going to survive and he do it he will be saved but if you refuse to do it you have solved your problem you have saved yourself by telling him as a pastor my role is to tell people exactly what you've had been said i was in many rural communities during the christmas i went around educating people and said anybody is telling you that all is well is not well we must come out we must team up, we must develop local strategy that will secure us and cast our vote and ensure our vote stand. Because when we continue in this fear, then we have just had killings now. We may have worst in the right we thing. It's not that. Well, we have to go. Reverend Hayab, I want to say thank you. Reverend Hayab is the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State. Um, let's hope that this uh, would be the last of it and something would actually um, have to, you know, break and give our government a reason to put an end to this terrorist activities. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to have you here. All right. Well, that's it on Plus Politics tonight. We want to thank you all for being part uh, of the show tonight. Um, don't forget, if you have missed any bit of the show, go to our YouTube, Plus, uh, Plus TV Africa or Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Subscribe and you will not miss anything. And don't forget, go get your PVC at your ward or your registration center because that is, like I always say, your passport to a new Nigeria. I am Mary Anna Cohen. Have a good night. <laughs>